Hi guys and girls of the Cloud Tech community, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are a few tech news highlights from this week in the world of cloud computing and IoT. I'd like to thank you all for your kind tweets, retweets, comments and feedback from last week's news and please remember to share, like, and comment, subscribe this video with your friends and with your colleagues. And if you have any media submissions that you'd like to put forward that's news happening in your business around cloud computing, IoT, artificial intelligence or blockchain, uh, I'd be happy uh, to have a look at what stories are happening uh, and how I can uh, feature them in the weekly news. Thanks again for watching. This week, CNBC reported that Target may well be moving away from Amazon Web Services. The massive online and offline retailer may well be planning to move its business away from AWS after apparently deciding it no longer wanted to fund its rival's ambitions. Target appears to be running a hybrid cloud strategy with a portion of its workloads on cloud services. According to the report, Microsoft, Google and Oracle are all eagerly lining up to pitch their services to Target. This is an additional sign this year that the competitors of Amazon.com are thinking really hard about their relationships with AWS. Perhaps the 13.7 billion purchase of Whole Foods may have served as a bit of a tipping point. Walmart is reportedly pressuring its suppliers to avoid doing tech business with AWS, which now provides a massive opening for Microsoft and Google Cloud solutions. Accounting and consultancy firm EY, which is part of Ernest & Young Global, said this week it will be launching a blockchain-based system enabling companies or groups of individuals to more easily share ownership of vehicles and access to cars and trucks. EY partner John Simlet told Reuters in an interview that EY could deploy the Tesseract system in a test with an unnamed partner within the next quarter. John Simlet went on to say that blockchain systems could enable shared use and shared ownership of large fleets of vehicles, such as a group of cars parked in a high-rise building that res residents could use as needed, gaining access using a smartphone app. This week, Brisbane cloud provider Flux acquired Exigent Australia. Exigent offered a range of cloud services, such as cloud hosting, co-location and virtual servers, and was founded in 2009. The acquisition also includes Exigent's brand's 10TB servers, which specialises in virtual servers, co-location and dedicated servers, and virtual DC, which also has the security offering. Flux offers a similar set of services and has landed a spot on the federal government's whole of government cloud service provider panel in April. Flux chief executive Angus Thompson said, we're excited to be growing in the phase of international corporations expanding into Australia and we strongly believe there will always be a place for Australian companies that provide local service and local infrastructure. This week, Swinburne University received a grant worth 135 million Australian dollars from Simmons and is set to take a lead role in the development of Industry 4.0. Jeff Connolly, the chairman and CEO of Simmons Australia, said that the grant would support Victoria and Australia by preparing students to participate fully in the engaging global innovation economy. Professor Bronwyn Fox, the director of the university's Manufacturing Futures Research Institute, said that the factory would work with industry partners to solve key challenges through integration of innovation design platforms, advanced manufacturing technologies, materials and information systems. The outcomes of our work will commercialise new technology, enabling Australian companies to capitalise on the expanding international market and tap into the global supply chains. Swinburne said the grant would provide a suite of advanced product lifecycle management software designed to integrate data, processes, business systems and people in the extended enterprise and a new generation cloud-based IoT platform, Mindsphere. Four successful startups have been offered 75,000 Australian dollars up front in seed capital investment as the first cohort of Telstra's NeuroD and they will benefit from a highly developed network of mentors and industry professionals. The four startups accepted into the MEL1 program are Smart Paddock, which is a farm management tool modernizing the global livestock industry through intelligent data analysis, utilizing IoT data straight from the pasture in order to increase production, efficiency, and improve animal health and well-being. 
Alpha Centauri, who have a mission to solve problems fundamentally to human progress with the cheap and sustainable production of food for all. Moduware, which is part of the modular technology movement, Moduware creates phone cases and power banks to extend the hardware and software capabilities of your smartphone. As a maker and an IoT platform, they allow developers to build their own module and write apps for existing ones. And finally, SofiHub, which is a hardware and AI platform using IoT sensors to learn what is normal in an elderly resident's home. Once normal is known, SofiHub will be able to identify abnormal events and trigger an alert automatically. It's unique because the primary interface is via voice and it doesn't require the residents to wear or carry a device. Congratulations to all of you on your exciting startup projects and please keep us updated with your progress and your successes. Oracle have announced this week about its collaboration with Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. They are set to develop an Internet of Things platform for smart manufacturing. The new FA-IT open platform for factory automation will be using edge computing between devices and business applications. The new platform enables the rapid collection, analysis and utilisation of data at production sites. With organisations rapidly adopting Industry 4.0, manufacturers are increasingly seeking to optimise their total manufacturing processes by using IoT to collect data from all equipment in factories for virtualization and analysis. Developing such IoT systems from scratch is an enormous task, requiring that data be collected and modelled from a wide variety of production equipment, including existing equipment for analytical purposes. A survey by Inmosat revealed the world currently has a significant Internet of Things skills shortage. The Future of IoT and Enterprise 2017 report interviewed 500 senior IT decision makers from major organizations across the Americas, EMEA and APAC regions to determine the level of IoT preparedness around the world. According to Inmosat, the shortage of staff with IoT-focused skills extends to specific technical disciplines, with 60% saying they required additional staff experience in cybersecurity to handle the vast quantities of data, 46% identifying a deficient of staff with an experience of analytics and data science, and 48% lacking the technical support skills needed to make their IoT projects successful. Paul Godonis, the president of Inmosat Enterprise Business Unit, said that there is a clear acknowledgement from organisations within all industries that IoT is set to play a crucial role in digital transformation and their ability to achieve competitive advantage. But for that to happen, businesses will need to have the correct skill sets in place and as our research demonstrates, many find themselves without the skilled staff required for this transformation and are unable to take advantage of the potential that IoT solutions offer. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and thanks for watching this week's Cloud Computing and IoT News Highlights. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and colleagues. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Brad Nelson. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard and we're also on Instagram. So please connect and share your stories, that would be fantastic and until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.